Hi again. Um, continuing our look into the uh, some of the more subtle new features coming in Howler 10. Uh, we're going to continue with the animation menu. And as we said before, uh, Howler 10 is really more about having new features that are out in the open. Um, but we do have a lot of little subtle changes that are hidden away inside of menus. So let's take a quick look at the uh, animation menu. Uh, and as I said, these are subtle subtle changes. One uh, little change is we fixed a typo on the uh, create animation panel. Um, the word frames did not fit quite within that label area, and it uh, it kind of that word disappeared. So that's been fixed. And also a few other small changes. A more significant change actually is a bug fix. Uh, when storing an animation to memory, um, when you close these animations, there was a situation uh, that could have kept them from being unloaded from memory, and that has been fixed. So that's sort of a big fix, really. Uh, but that is something to be aware of. And uh, continuing on, the load sequence panel has a new um, system view browser. Uh, that's a little more mo modern, and uh, something we haven't really talked about before is um, how the load sequence panel works. Internally, it will use, um, depending on the file type, and there's a little wild card you can type in to see different file types, like .jpeg or uh, .tga or .bmp or whatever, um, but depending on what types of files you, 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 you load, it might either use our own API for things such as BP, BMP and Targa, or it might use GDI Plus for uh, things like TIFF uh, and uh, some of the more other, other formats like uh, PNG and others like that. Um, but there's also an external loader. Uh, we use Image Magic. Uh, as an external loader, this lets us have a, a broader range of files that can be supported. And also, a little uh, extra <laughs> level of support, support for files that may be more obscure or may not be uh, fully supported or features that are not fully supported by GDI Plus or our, our own API. Uh, that gives us sort of a second chance at loading those files. Um, I believe Image Man Magic handled something like 60 something different format so there's a good chance you'll be able to load just about anything um, using Howler uh, the external loader uh, image magic does take a little bit longer uh, as everything has to be cached out on the disk so be aware of that so it's best to go ahead and try things um, without that first and if not go ahead and use that option so and moving on <laughs> talk about a few other things the scan Frames uh, used to be a plugin, and it has been internalized. One subtle difference uh, is we've added a message that tells you that it's going to create an anima animation. It did not do this before; it just went ahead and created it. Um, we wanted the user to know that an animation was going to be created uh, when this filter is loaded. Um, otherwise, have the option of turning it off in case the user does not actually want to uh, create an animation for some reason. He would just like playing around and hit that button by mistake or something. Alright, so a um, couple other changes. Well, basically the frames drop down here is pretty much a universe unto itself. Uh, this is the same menu you get after you've created an animation and you right click on the film strip here. It's the same menu you get here. There is one uh, new feature here or set of new features here called extrapolate this frame um, and some other things that are in there. Uh, that's been covered in another video, but basically that lets you um, extrapolate fl extrapolate frames or even blocks. Um, say you had a missing set of uh, frames in a render coming off the render stack. Uh, you could simply select that area, drop it down, and collect extrapolate block, and that would go ahead and interpolate those two uh, between those points, sort of morph between those two points. So something to be aware of that's new in, uh, actually sort of a major new feature in uh, Howler 10. And um, feel free to experiment with that or look at our other videos. Uh, moving on, of course, we want to go ahead and get this video uh, finished. We just want to keep it pretty brief today. Um, a few other small changes. And there's probably a lot of things we could talk about, uh, the timeline and the the brush keyframe and all this. There is one subtle change on the timeline if you're using uh, the transform filter. And I believe it's uh, here. There is no, a new parameter called tiled. 
and that will basically um, tile uh, whatever your transformation is uh, to get a, a repeating pattern something to experiment with and uh, the exposure sheet mostly has cosmetic changes but there's one little extra hint that we added here uh, open an auto file to begin that basically is a hint to users where to start who people who have never uh, used the exposure shoot sheet before will get an idea and say oh I need to open a wave file and uh, that's basically where you start uh, with the exposure sheet you add an audio file and then you start working from there just one little uh, change we made. Um, a rate to animation was previously a plugin, and this has been internalized. As we said before, internalizing often gives us an opportunity to uh, add additional optimizations. In this case, it's really more of a maintenance uh, issue. It lets us uh, simplify our uh, the maintenance maintenance of our program uh, and re uh, reduce the number of plugins we have, that sort of thing, and. Uh, that's about it for today. Um, thanks for watching. Talk to you again. Uh, we got some uh, bigger things to talk about, bigger fish to fry. And so uh, keep watching on Peter Haller channel and ta-ta for now.